I'm here to announce that Caitlin Armstrong was captured on June 29th by foreign officials in the Republic of Costa Rica, where she was detained on an immigration violation and deported back to the United States on July 2nd. On July 5th, the Austin Police Department extradited Armstrong from the Harris County Jail in Houston, Texas, to the Travis County Jail here in Austin, Texas, following a 43-day fugitive investigation. Now to what's trending in true crime, my friends. Oh, Caitlin Armstrong is back in the headlines this morning after police say she tried to escape their custody in Texas on Wednesday. We've got the video of it. Look at this. In this video that was taken by Teresa Rangel, Armstrong can be seen running. Look at her in her prison garb, running toward a fence, police chasing behind her. Officers eventually were able to catch up with her and then take her back into custody. All after several minutes of uh, chasing the accused killer, she was brought back in. And as we remember, let's go back to June of 2022. That's when this all happened. The first time she was taken into custody, that was after being on the run for a month. She was grabbed in Costa Rica. This following the death of Mariah Wilson. Caitlin Armstrong is facing a first-degree murder charge. In that case, her trial is set for October 30th. So this morning, we're asking our legal eagles, is Armstrong going to face more charges? I've got a great panel joining me this morning. Still with me, trial attorney and law professor Dante Mills, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Joe Tamburino, and criminal defense attorney Michael J. Brown. Good morning to you all. Thanks for being with us. Joe Tamburino, would you start us off, please? What do you think? Yeah, she's going to be facing more charges. There's no doubt about that. Uh, additionally, you know, we all talk about, you know, the consciousness of guilt and a lot of that plays into criminal trials. And I'm sure the prosecutor is going to use that in this kind of a situation. Additionally, you know, there's the whole ruse of it all, which is, you know, she was supposed to go on this medical appointment. Who knows if that was even valid or true? And then she splits. So, yeah, that's going to come up in her trial. Right. I mean, did she think they wouldn't catch her? Oh, Michael J. Brown, what are your thoughts on this this morning, please? Good morning, Julie. Yeah, the prosecutor is going to be salivating at this type of evidence. Uh, you have her literally running from correction officers. You, you have a caption on a video. As Joe said, this is what we call consciousness of guilt. It's actually a jury charge in New York where uh, the judge can instruct the jury that you can infer a guilty conscience from those actions and, it, and it's coupled with her fleeing uh, in, initially in the in the investigation to Costa Rica. So you put those two things together, juries really look and frown down upon that type of conduct and they definitely use it in their evaluation. Oh, you're absolutely right, Michael. Yeah, it's like the judge now has two reasons to grant that instruction for the state of Texas, the flight in Costa Rica and then the flight in Texas. Dante Mills, last but not least, tell me what you're thinking, please. It's a little difficult, but I'm going to take the other side on this one uh, Go because for it. of your amazing show. Oh, it's no, we love it. We love the that. Second time that she tried to escape, she even had plastic surgery that shows the length she would go to. To she also led these police officers on a 10-minute chase that shows she's still in shape from being a yoga instructor. But here's what I would say if I'm faced with that. Uh, jury charge in these facts. I would say, listen, she didn't believe in the system. She felt she was being treated unfairly, that she wouldn't have a fair opportunity to present her case, that everybody treated her like he, she was guilty, and she felt like she had no choice um, but to try and get away because she did not believe that she would get a fair trial, um, and she didn't believe in the system. That's the only really argument that you can make when you have someone on video running away from officers. I'm so glad you're bringing this up, Dante. Thank you for that. I want to pick all of your brains some more about this because now her attorneys, you know, they're waking up this morning going, oh my gosh, like, did you have to run? So she's been in custody since June of 2022. She was on the run, as we know, prior to that, uh, after the death of Mariah Wilson. When she was initially arrested, uh, U.S. Marshals, they got her, uh, and uh, U.S. Marshal Brandon Filla was asked to describe Armstrong's demeanor after they grabbed her up. Let's take a look at what he said. How was her attitude? Is she seeing compassionate? Is she seeing sorry? Or you know, speaking with the foreign nationals there in Costa Rica, I'd say she was exhausted. Uh, you could tell uh, eventually, you know, when she was encountered by uniformed officers in Costa Rica, uh, she didn't give her true identity at first. 
Uh, but when she was taken into custody uh, and questioned, uh, you know, minutes later, then she finally confessed to her true identity. So I think that was her beginning to come forward, uh, but it took a little bit of time. Oh, okay, so she's not helping herself out here. So with this new attempt, what are these attorneys going to have to do? Uh, because we know the prosecutors are going to say flight as consciousness of guilt, as my esteemed guests have said this morning. Let me bring them back in. Uh, Joe Tamburino, back to you on this one, uh, putting on your criminal defense attorney hat and dovetailing off of what Dante started us with here. What are the defense attorneys going to try to do to combat this, please? Well, what they'll likely do is get some type of mental health evaluation because, you know, if, if the facts aren't on your side, and in this case, they clearly aren't, and you've got aberrant behavior that you have to explain, you're going to have to get some type of an evaluation because if something comes out of that that you could use, you'll use it. If not, well, then you're just going to have to deal with the cards that you've been uh, given. Oh, I like it. I like it. Mental health eva evaluation, good place to start. Uh, Michael J. Brown, tell us what, if anything, you have to add to that, please. Well, I agree with the professor in the sense that uh, when somebody flees like that and you have them dead to rights, so to speak, you have to explain it. And, and the reason being is, hey, I don't have faith in the system and I had no alternative but to flee. The difference, I think, here is uh, initially I, I get that explanation why she went to Costa Rica because you don't know how people react when they're under suspicion for something they say they didn't do. But now you're in custody and we see it on the screen. I mean, I mean, she's doing a 50-yard sprint here. It's a tough one. Uh, and it's not, it's definitely different than like the OJ case, for instance. Again, initially where the allegation pops up, this is much further down the road in terms of time. It, it's, it's problematic for the defense. Mm -hmm, definitely as well said, Michael. Dante Mills, take us home if you would, please, my friend. Your final thoughts on this point. What more can the defense team do for Caitlin Armstrong? Listen, Hail Mary, uh, because this is a very <laughs> difficult case. Hail Mary is maybe try to get that video kept out somehow uh, where the jury does not see her making that 50-yard dash and, and leaping for the fence in prison clothes. I mean, Honestly, this is a very tough case, and she made it even tougher for herself. Uh, we can try and be defense attorneys and say, uh, you know, she didn't believe in a system, she felt trapped, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, even get a mental health evaluation. But we would have to show that her time in prison, when she was under observation, that she was doing things that show mental health issues. You can't just say, I had a, a burst of mental health uh, a lapse when I decided to run, but otherwise I've never shown anything for this over a year period when I was in custody. So it's a very tough case uh, and she made it even tougher. As her defense attorneys, I'm shaking my head uh, and asking for a bigger retainer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They deserve it definitely with this client. Dante Mills, Michael J. Brown, wonderful having you both. I know you have to get off to court. Joe Tamburino, we're having you stick around for a little while. Thank you for that. We're gonna hit a break, friends.